Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Toby. Thanks for your time today. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm here to talk to you about two things. Uh, those two things are vanity metrics and social selling. So uh, to be clear, the vanity metrics uh, I define as basically things that potentially look good on the outside but might not necessarily add that much value to your business. So for example, having a lot of fans is great, but if the fans don't buy your product, then it doesn't really mean much. Second point is uh, talking about social selling and why I am of the opinion that social media is not necessarily the place organically to sell your product. So um, a little bit about me first before I got into the talking. So um, as we said over the mic, uh, we've come from Australia. We got here yesterday. Um, it's a little bit colder here than it is where we're from. <laughs> uh, so just adapting. Um, so yeah, I'm 25 years old. Uh, I'm extremely passionate about fitness and digital marketing and, and business. Um, so passionate so that I have a little bit of a reputation for talking really fast um, and also talking a little bit too much. Uh, so I'm going to do my best today to make sure that uh, I wrap the points up as concisely as possible. Um, so I've been running businesses since I was about 18 years old uh, and now I run a company called Sweat. Um, so what is Sweat? Uh, so Sweat is the world's largest health and fitness platform for women. Uh, our mission statement is quite simple, and it's that we want to empower women worldwide through the delivery of health and fitness content. So Sweat is actually a progression of um, Kayla's and mine career uh, as personal trainers. So we, we initially began as PTs working in the park, and we eventually launched a business online um, with Kayla, selling a product called BBG. And we obviously realized quite early on that although that was great and really successful, that the market was so much bigger than what we were providing. So we, we, Born was something that we, we've kind of been called the, uh, the Netflix of fitness for women. And uh, that's because uh, we're focusing on delivering as much high quality content as possible in a diverse manner to give the best experience to our end consumer, which is women typically between the age of 18 and 40. Uh, so we've done this over the last few years, and we've done it all basically by leveraging social media. So that's what I'm going to talk about. So uh, over the last couple of years, so we launched our app uh, at the end of 2015. We've now got over 30 million users. Um, every quarter, our social media has over 6 billion impressions, um, and we're on track to hit 100 million in revenue this year. 100 million revenue? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! What? Take it one more time. Sorry? The, oh, did it not work? There we go. Yeah. That was great. All right, we're off to a good start. Okay. All right, so anyway, we're going to move quickly into the point. So like I said, I'm here to talk about the fact that vanity metrics don't matter. So up on the screen behind me, um, you'll see an equation, and it basically says that likes, comments, and fans does not equal money. And this is probably a little bit unconventional, because a lot of people, especially in the marketing world, are really of the opinion that more fans equals more money. Uh, but I don't agree with that. So uh, we've been using Facebook back since about 2012, uh, and then Instagram to follow and all the other channels. Um, and yeah, this was before the ads used to come up all the time. It was before everyone wanted to blame the algorithms for their lack of success on social media. Um, so, but again, to be clear, there's not a direct correlation between fans and likes and comments and money. So I don't want you to get caught up on that. Um, something that I want to talk about that we talk about quite regularly at Sweat is that there's two distinct forms of metrics when it comes to social media. So one of those forms is the likes and comments and fans. It's also the reach and impressions and so on and so forth. Um, we call those qualitative metri uh, quantitative metrics, sorry. So they're numbers. But we also quite intently and deliberately focus on something that we call qualitative metrics. Uh, and qualitative metrics, or what we call qualitative measuring, refers to the content that we use how does that actually make people feel? All right, so if we say that fans doesn't necessarily equal money and so on and so forth, then what actually does? And then how do we convert that into making money? Um, so I'm going to use an example. So I assume most people here have social media, which means that a lot of people here would have seen that there's a whole bunch of influencers online, men and women, right? But we serve a female market. So in the women's space, let's use the example of a girl wearing a bikini, looks great, posing on the beach, perhaps in a slightly provocative fashion. Right? That's on one hand. On the other hand, we're going to use the example of someone wearing you know, leggings and a sports top, they're in a gym, posing in a lunge position. 
the girl in the bikini gets a huge amount of likes, and the girl in the tights doesn't get anywhere near as many likes, even though she's talking about something that can add value to your training and so on and so forth, right? So quantitatively, some would say that that post has failed or that it hasn't performed as well as the girl in the bikini. But the question that I would pose to all of you as marketers is which one is actually more valuable? So for a business that's trying to sell its own product, like us, for example, we're trying to serve the female market, how much does it matter to us if we've got lots of guys liking the photo of that girl in the bikini? Well, it doesn't really matter at all, right? And do we want people to feel good about our content? We do. So we want to educate them. We want to value add to what they do. We want to generate credibility, right? A girl posing in a bikini really provocatively does not do that for us, right? So we want to focus on making sure that if there's two groups of 100 people, that the 100 people that are engaging with our product, they feel good about what we're doing, that we're adding value to what they're doing by educating them one way or another, and something that we can do to motivate or empower them to actually take action with our product. So I'm going to move on to my next point, and my next point's quite simple, and it's that social media, organically, is not for selling your product. Right? So I don't want to confuse this with advertising, because advertising on social is a great way to generate revenue. Right, but I want to talk about it from more, so, more so from an organic standpoint. So if I posed you the question, what are Facebook and Instagram? So Facebook and Instagram are social networks, right? So in that slogan, you see that Facebook and Instagram are social networks. And the purpose of a network is to bring people together, correct? So if we're bringing people together, right, why is there so many businesses and brands on social media that are intent on in telling everyone that this is the best product in the world and you should buy it, you should buy it, you should buy it, you should buy it, you should buy it. Today, we even have 25% off. You should 100% buy this. Well, they shouldn't be, right? And if I posed the question to you and I said, what is eBay, you would tell me what's a place to go buy products, right? So when did people get the two confused, right? They never became one, right? Facebook and Instagram are not the same as eBay. So why are businesses using these channels to continually tell people that their product is the best and to tell, businesses, uh, to tell users that their business is superior and they should be buying their product, right? So to pose the question then, well, how do you generate revenue on social media if you're not selling your product? If you're not using Facebook and Instagram as a means to sell your product organically and tell people to buy it, how do you generate revenue? I would answer that question by posing another question. And that question would be, well, what is our job and responsibility as a marketing person? Or well, as marketers, what are we meant to do, right? We're meant to do four things, or our job can be divided into four things. We're responsible for gaining someone's attention, generating interest in our product, manufacturing desire among an audience, and then eventually getting some action out of those people. So just those four things again. So as marketers, our job is quite simple. We are there to get attention from people. We are there to get interest from people. When we have the interest and their attention, we want them to desire what it is that we're selling, and then eventually we're going to get some action out of them. So something that I quite regularly say, and that we use in our marketing team at Sweat, is that we don't actually sell our product we educate our users to buy it. So we're not sitting there all day telling our people and our fans and followers that you should be buying our product, but rather we're giving them reasons as to why they want to do that. So I want to finish this point with something really quite simple, um, and that's that a lot of people, when we talk about the concept of saying buy this, buy this, buy this all the time, are focused on today, but a lot of businesses forget that tomorrow is coming. So I'll leave you with one sentiment at one point that we, we refer to quite regularly at Sweat, and that is the concept of sustainable marketing. So the concept of sustainable marketing in a short and sweet version is effectively that as marketers, we should be not, not be focusing our attention today on selling our product, but we should be focusing our attention on something that we can do today that will help sell our product tomorrow. So in closing, I would like to leave the audience with four points and four points only. So as marketers, as I said before, our job is to get attention, interest, desire, and create action among an audience. What are four things that every business and brand in the world can do to help make that happen? So if I can leave you with anything today, it'll be the four points that are up on the screen behind me now. And those four points are quite simple. It's be authentic. Now, authenticity has basically become a buzzword, not dissimilar to innovation and disruption, all right? But I mean, legitimately being authentic about what you do, being passionate, loving it. 
be informative. So, you know, educate your users. Like I said before, we don't sell our product. We educate our users so that they want to buy it. Okay, so we're not selling it. We're educating them to make that choice the right way. And obviously, if you're educating people, it's important to make sure that the information that you provide them is correct and that you are making sure that you're a legitimate expert of what you do. So you need to have credibility as number three. So it's important to make sure that at all times, no matter whatever it is that you do, that you're being authentic, you're educating your audience, and you're gaining credibility among your fans. And if you do all of those three things, it's really easy to make sure that you're doing the fourth point as well, which is adding value. If you're not adding value to your audience, you're wasting their time. So to leave everything in one big, short and simple sentence, vanity metrics do not matter. Do not focus on likes and comments and fans, because ultimately, they're not, they're not the measurements that are going to always make you money. And secondly, always keep in the back of your mind that social media is a place designed to help you build an audience. It's not a place for you to push your product continuously to the users on it. And no matter all of those things wound up into one sentence, you cannot fake it until you make it in business. Thank you.